soon as it starts recording. Welcome everyone. And this is the curation and creation session of the Microsoft, um, well, actually not Microsoft, but the HyperDoc se uh, sessions that this is the fourth session of. So we've had a series of four sessions. You can find those all if you're watching the recording. You can find those all on the Q uh, YouTube channel. And we start with what's the hype with HyperDocs. We go into multimedia tech sets. We do a deep dive and learn inside of a HyperDoc. And this is the final session where we're gonna do a few looks at some other HyperDocs that we didn't get a chance to see last time. And then we are going to um, actually go out and look for examples and maybe find one that we attempt to make our own. So that's what this session is going Going to be about. I'm going to share my screen and um, I have people over in the chat who can ask questions at any time so you might see me respond to those and um, and we're going to get started. So as people enter and they're coming in right now, um, this is session four of a four-part session. So if at any point you are confused, it's because you're in session four. <laughs> but we'll go ahead and start and we'll do a little refresh for those people who haven't been here. And maybe it'll be helpful for the people who you're on session four with me. Um, and you can get this slide deck by going to infuse link forward slash last session and that's is that this is going to be uh what i present from but you might want to just watch first and i will put this in here so that you have for the people who are attending live so that you have this at some point if we go out and look at some stuff so um so this document that we see right here this proportional reasoning document is a hyperdoc and it's a hyperdoc because there's a full lesson design inside of this particular doc. It's just one small lesson. And a hyperdoc could be a, a unit inside of a hyperdoc if you wanted to get um, that in depth with it. But this particular one is just teaching students how to do the math uh, problem of proportional reasoning. And just as a refresher, we have the wonder section where the kids go in and they um, actually watch a video from someone who is making cakes and they talk about how they use proportional reasoning all the time. And that wonder section is supposed to kind of um, uh, activate curiosity for students and give them some background knowledge so that when we start talking about proportional reasoning, they have some schema to attach it to. So it's a really important part of the pedagogical um, uh, process. And then they go and they play. And that means they're going to play a game around proportional reasoning. And here they're going to start getting into some vocabulary. They're going to have gotten into some in the wonder. And um, now they're going to kind of just be playing so that it's kind of, I like to think of it as lighthearted way to sort of introduce students to this. So old math class, I got my overhead projector, I got out my expo pins, and I explained to you proportional reasoning, and you were like, I don't care about proportional reasoning. Who cares? And then some kids, when are we going to use this? And so this particular hyperdoc kind of eliminates that because it's giving that activation of curiosity, that schema of background knowledge that kids need in order to, um, to understand this. So in the review section is actually a video where someone is explaining how you do a proportional reasoning um, problem. And this is really good because students can go back and watch it what, rather than the one and done we did in 1985 of... Um, Oh, yes. Thanks. Sorry, y'all. I usually say, and thank you, um, Becca, for bringing that up since you've been at so many sessions. Um, I'm stopping for a second for the recording, uh, people who are watching this and recording because someone can't find me. And so one of the things you want to do is go to the participants, which is in the toolbar. Go to that participants and click on that and you'll find three dots. And then um, you pin me for anyone else who might also need that because you already figured it out. So anyway. Back at the hyperdoc, 
um, uh, this is great because we used to do one and done, and then we would be like, go home and practice proportional reasoning, and kids would be like, what? what? I forget what she said, or you go look at the example in the book, and then it just never really worked out. If you were um, a kid who took math in that way, like sometimes I got it. Most of the time I got it. But when I didn't get it, I was I was like out of luck. <laughs> there was no if there was no one at my house who could help me with that math problem, I would have just never learned that math problem. And a hyperdoc takes that away because it, it embeds in it these lessons that we can do. And then you can see in the practice portion, the kid gets to pick a problem. In this particular face-to-face -face classroom, the kids would work together, a couple of them, to solve one of these problems. They would go to step three to choose how they're going to show how they solved it. I personally prefer, in this example, Flipgrid. And then um, and my little toolbar is in the way, but there's a step four where they turn it in. But if you were doing it in Flipgrid, you wouldn't have to turn it in. It would just get turned in. And then they have to go watch other people's. And often what happens in this example is because they have to watch other students, they can self-correct. And I've seen students, and we all have who have used HyperDocs, students go, oh, I did that wrong. I didn't realize. But when I watched Julie do it, I saw what I did wrong, so I want to re-record. And so it's that um, metacognition of thinking about your thinking, comparing your answer to another kid's. And seeing that you did it wrong rather than me, Miss Clark, giving you back your math paper with all kinds of red ink and a zero out of 10. And then we're moving on. Sorry, we're already done with proportional reasoning. You didn't get it this year. Maybe in fifth grade you will or whatever it is. So this is really more powerful teaching. And especially for those of us who have to be remote next year, um, this becomes a place where kids can do this. Um, they, they could do this all to, or they can do it at home and then they can come back and we can unpack some of the things that are, that are embedded in this hyperdoc. So for those of you who haven't been in that, in, in any of our sessions, that's a review of hyperdocs. Now we're going to go look at some for a second because we didn't get to finish this last time. I, if I can remember, right. Um, and we're going to skip past this, by the way, for those of you I guess, I guess I better not skip past this. I'm Holly. <laughs> I live in San Diego. I've written um, three books now. The Google Infused Classroom, which is um, in technology and education on Amazon. It's the number one bestseller. It has been for a while. And um, just saying that so you understand, like, like a lot of people read this one. And then I wrote the Microsoft Infused Classroom because I learned about Microsoft tools and I love them now. And I recently just published the Chromebook Infused Classroom, which is really high up there, too. I think it was number two last time I checked. So I'm super happy about the success of those books. But in them, we talk about blended learning. And there's a big focus in Chromebook Infused Classroom on this hyperdoc process because it's so important for what we're going to be doing in our new normal. And so... Um, I want to give a shout out to Lisa Heifel, who is one, you can see her name here in the HyperDoc handbook. She's one of the people who wrote and came up with this idea of HyperDocs and lesson design inside of a doc. And I just want to shout out to her because she helped me make this presentation. She was here for one of the recordings and now it's just me. But um, I want to give a uber respect to the girls who have come up with this idea and you'll be able to visit their site Today in this session, we're going to be going there and trying to um, see how we can get you at a place where you can start making these without coming to this hour session. So you can see there's a breakdown here of everything that I talked about in the earlier um, slide where uh, it, it tells you and you have access to these slides. Uh, it tells you why these components are in each of these. And it kind of even says, you know, like, take a look at that iPod question. Should we use iPods? Can kids really, um, do they know what an iPod is? Do they have the vocabulary? Do they care about an iPod? All we would have to do is change that to an iPad or an iPhone and we get the same thing. So it's just really looking at the lesson design of things. So we're gonna head um, to really quickly to remember the difference between a multimedia tech set as we move forward today and a hyperdoc. And what I'm gonna ask you to do, we're gonna, we're gonna go out exploring. You might wanna explore a multimedia tech set versus a hyperdoc. And I'm gonna explain again the difference between the two. Some of you are 
got this down. But a multimedia text set is actually a doc with links. And this is a doc with links to resources about um, something like, for example, in this one, a refugee. So the kids go out and they consume information about refugees before we go into a unit to activate that curiosity, to give that schema of background knowledge. It could also be a doc that's used at the end or in the middle to give kids some resources to help them be successful. But in this case, it's being used as a, um, as an activator, as an explore activity. Same with this long walk to water, which some of you have seen, but the long walk to water to me looks a little mm, worksheety. It's very linear. You're gonna go and do this, it feels like. I don't know if you have to go in, in, in order, but it feels like you have to. And so I'm not as big of a fan of that one as I am of this, what I like to call an explore board instead of a multimedia tech set. Because if I tell my students or even do a session on multimedia tech sets, no one comes because <laughs> they're like, eh, that doesn't sound very interesting. But when I say hyperdoc, more people come. And both are technically hyperdocs but one has a full lesson design. And what makes them a hyperdoc is they are docs with links. But what makes them interesting is that they are colorful and packaged and alive. So in the refugee one, um, for those of you who are new, I would give kids eight to 10 minutes to just go explore in class, watch some videos, look at some um, information about refugees. And then we would start talking about them instead of going in cold as we sometimes do. And this long walk to water gives you some schema for reading. It's just, um, and people have taken this one and put it into an explore board like the one next to it. And it looks, in my opinion, it looks better and more inviting. So one of the key components of both a hyperdoc and a multimedia tech set is that they are packaged, really cool looking, let's just say, um, colorfully, and they, they make a student kind of want to become involved and, and to do it. But and, um, the difference here is that this is just exploring. A hyperdoc is explain, is explore, explain, apply. So that one we saw before, we explore proportional reasoning, we explained by doing it, or it got explained to us, and then we applied and did it. And so that's the difference of these two documents, but both technically hyperdocs, but you don't really become a full hyperdoc until you bring in the explore, explain, apply to it. So for those of you who weren't in the other sessions, this is where people often start. This is a template. And this template um, is where we're going to start today, later on, in a second, after we go and explore some of these uh, hyperdocs. So we're going to be working in the explore, explain, apply section today. If it were a multimedia tech set, only explore. So as, an, as a um, quick reference for people who are new and as a review, a multimedia tech set, which worst name ever given to something. <laughs> um, I don't know who came up with that. They should lose their job. Um, uh, is a doc with links to a variety of media like you saw in that refugee one on a given topic for students to consume information. Now, a multimedia, I mean, a hyperdoc is the one that we saw at the beginning with the math. It's the same, except it goes further. So it's a digital lesson not a doc with links, it's a digital lesson with links to a variety of media on a given topic for students to consume information. Okay, that's almost the same except for the lesson design and includes one or more opportunities for students to connect beyond the classroom, collaborate, create, share, reflect, and incorporate these activities. So, um, that's just, and you can, you have access to these slides and you can go read the other ones that are about building background and about opportunities for students to explore. So multimedia text that they explore, but they explore and in a hyperdoc. 
So just think of the blue part of that as the and we take it even further. So we're going to be going out and looking at multimedia tech sets and I'm going to put it on music and you're going to spend 10 or 15 minutes just clicking through um, these lessons and finding one that maybe this new school year, if you are in the um, in the Western Hemisphere, not the Western, the Northern Hemisphere, it's our new school year. If you're Southern, it's um, it's different. But we're going to go be looking at them. And here's what I want you to think about, because this is the important part. We talked about this last time, but these are the important five elements in creating a hyperdoc. So as you look through them, you're going to want to think about your grade level. And as you design your own, what is the goal? Do you want kids to learn about the Revolutionary War? Well, then, OK, let's go find one that has to do with that. But how am I going to do that? And then you want to decide on what your cycle of learning going to be. Is it going to be explain, explore, apply, which I'm fond of? Or are you going to go into the five E's model, um, the hyperdoc model, which is um, has an extension of the explore, explain, apply to have share and reflect. Um, so you're going to have to think which kind of doc do I want to make? And I, we ask that because there are templates that are different for each one. And then you're going to need to choose the packaging. Are you going to put it in Microsoft Word or Google Docs? Are you going to make it in a slide, like PowerPoint or slides? Maybe you're going to do a thing link or Buncee, a Genially. Like, where are you going to package your HyperDoc? And all of these are going through your mind as you're thinking about it. Um, what's the workflow going to be? How are you going to push it out? Is it going to be in Teams and a tab? Are you going to give each kid their own document? Um, if you do that, then when uh, you need to make a change, you can't because they all have their own documents. So I like to keep them inside of the same document. In Teams, I would put that in a tab like I just talked about. And in Google Classroom, I would pass them out as not to each student with their own name. I would pass out one copy of it. Um, but depends. If I want to differentiate and put different things and things, then I might have four or five that I give out to students, depending on what I had put behind that first facade. So the facade of refugee, you don't know what it links to. So maybe you're a student who needs a different level reading. So I'll put in different uh, level reading into that. And no one knows because you think you're all in the same doc. Maybe you know if you're sitting next to each other, but certainly in remote learning, I can get away with that pretty, <laughs> pretty easy. Um, and then the design. And I want to talk for a second about the design because I find this really important. In brain research tells us that if things are too um, cluttered, if the font is crazy, thank you. Becca, you're like my, my um, help here. You're, you're like my assistant and I appreciate it. Um, if uh, we know that if, if you use crazy font, and I see this a lot, I have to be honest with you. When I go look at examples, and you're going to see this today, I go, oh, there's too much going on here. There's too much this or there's too much that. And you really do need to consider that. When I first started teaching, I was told that my um, I need to have kids work all over the room. And I even got um, my... my uh, observation would go down if I didn't have certain things on the board and hanging in the room. And so I got all Martha Stewart. I'm like, uh, like if a, if a, um, someone came, like they told me I had to have stuff up. So I, I was going to have the best looking classroom in the school. And then I learned during my PhD that that's exactly the opposite of what kids need. Kids with processing disorders, kids with executive functioning problems, kids with attention disorders, which is pretty much describes our classrooms. Um, it, it causes too much um, noise in their brain and it makes it hard for them. Even if they're not looking at that stuff, too much noise clutters their brain and, and um, brings up some of these processing disorders. And so when you're designing these um, hyperdocs, you want to consider that as well. I've seen people do them in like purple backgrounds and black, like crazy stuff. And we, even if you find some today that are like that, consider using a, a, a much uh, simpler font. Um, and don't be like every kid we've ever had who, when they write a paper, wants to do it in old English font. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, I taught seventh grade uh, writing, so that's my PTSD. They always want to turn it into crazy font. So I want you to think about this as we look at them and someday when you decide I'm ready to design my own. Often, I just steal someone else's design and put my stuff in it. Before we go out, I want to say one other thing. And we're going to go, when I say go out, we're going to go out and look at examples. And then we're going to bring our favorite ones and share them out into a Padlet. Um, before we do that, I want you to know that I have never found a HyperDoc someone else has created that I thought was perfect for me. And often I see some and you don't even want to hear what I say. Like, I'm like, well, I won't tell you, <laughs> but you can imagine um, those people are trying. I, I'm not there to judge them. I'm just like, yeah, not for me. And I move on. So as you see some of these today, they might not be for you, but don't think that hyperdocs are wrong. Just that person and you don't design in the same way. And they might want to go through the lesson differently. So we're going to first um, look for some, actually, let's look at some of these templates first. Let me click here. And we're going to be going out into the HyperDoc site right now. And I don't know if you can see that because I'm, uh, let me ask you guys and maybe Becca, since you're my assistant, <laughs> you can take off your microphone for a second and tell me, uh, um, tell me if you can see this HyperDoc site that I'm at. I don't I'm think yet. Okay, thank you. So I got to stop presenting and go out to my desktop. Thank you. That's the thing with Teams. If you yeah. change the window, change the application, it doesn't change. Same with um, same with uh, um, Meet though too. Um, and uh oh, Microsoft Edge would like to record this computer screen. I have to change my um, preferences for a second because I just downloaded Edge. Okay. All right. It will work now. Yeah, I was doing that this morning in Meet too, and I was like, oh, this is a pain. So I think um, the technology will catch up with this, I hope. Zoom, it's a little better. Zoom is actually, I don't know, I'm liking it recently because I like breakout rooms. Um, okay, because I would put you all in breakout rooms right now if we were in Zoom. But breakout rooms is coming to Teams and some really great stuff's coming to Teams. Anyway, so I'm going to um, present. Oops, I was presenting, my bad, I apologize for that. And then if the, when I go right now to the HyperDoc site, if you don't see it, please come on the microphone and tell me because I'm out and I'm not inside of Teams anymore. So these are the templates. So when I said, how are you gonna design? Is it gonna be five E's? Is it gonna be explore, explain, apply? You think about what it's going to look like. So here's a template for five E's. You could click on this and a template comes up. And the five E's are engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. So then you would go through this and design based on this. I personally have not used this method. I, I struggle with five E's because I believe it's, I, I haven't used it, let's just say. Because <laughs> um, I'm looking for some different pedagogical features in mine. Doesn't mean that those are wrong. Um, so there's all kinds of different templates here. There's a hero's journey. So in a moment after we, um, in fact, let's do this. I want you all to come here and here's how you get. So I want you to go to a new tab and go to hyperdocs.co. And when you get there, you're going to um, head to, and I'm going to go there like you guys so that I can see how you get there from just going from hyperdocs.co and I just typed that wrong. And I want you to explore some of these templates. So you're going to go to find and then templates and that's how you get there. So it's not .com, that will take you to Padlet. They stole the .com um, thing from them. And uh, you're just going to go from hyperdocs.co and I want you to explore these templates because this is going to be our first place that we start if we don't take one from someone else. So go ahead and I'm going to give you five minutes to click around in these. Um, okay, Google, set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes. 
Stopping now. Okay, so Google will let us know when five minutes is up. So I want you just to take a moment to click. And I'm going to look at some. I haven't done any for nonfiction reading. Let's check that out. Okay, Google, play Spotify classical for focus. Sure, playing your Spotify playlist called classical for focus. Well, this is interesting. Not my playlist. Oh, this is nice. Sorry, I'm talking out loud. So um, I want to stop you for a second just to talk over your what you're exploring. But if you like any of these, all you need to do is go to file. And if you are a Google school, ooh, this doesn't have make a copy in it. That's really weird. I'll let them know. You should be able to make a copy. Um, and there must be a reason that they have it like that. But um, or you could normally, if you are a Microsoft school, go to download, and you can right now, you can go down, you can download it into a docx. Looks like you could probably download it as um, a docx and then bring it back into your Google Drive if you wanted to. Maybe that's what they're forcing. Mine uh, has make a copy. I don't know, it depends on your browser. Yeah, you know what? I'm in Edge this time. I haven't been in Edge before, so maybe that's why. Maybe it's only allowing Microsoft. Ooh, tricky. I don't like that. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm in Edge. You're in Edge too? Yeah. And it's letting you make a copy? Yep. Huh. Interesting. Well, you're special and I'm not. So what I did the first time um, is I made a file uh, folder and I made a copy of all of these and I put them in. I ended up only using the Explore, Explain, Apply one, but um, that's just what I did. I wanted to know where they were. I didn't want to have to go find them. So might be something you do. Okay. They keep updating um, Edge. So it may be an updating thing. I think every day. I just downloaded it today. So I should oh. have the most recent. Um, it's, I'm sure it's just me. I'm sure they probably, no, I'm kidding. Um, I'm going to now, well, the, hold on. Okay, Google. How much time left on timer? You've got 57 seconds left. Okay, cancel. Okay, Google, cancel timer. I'm going to place in the um, chat right now. I'm going to place a doc that has elementary examples of HyperDocs, and then I'm going to go grab um, the ones for secondary. And I got to find them. I don't know which one you meant. I won't make any changes. Oh, no. Okay. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> okay, Google. Uh, stop timer. Okay, it's canceled. And I'm not finding my, so give me a second and I will go get them. Actually, I'm better than that. So I know she is so polite and she's Australian. I made her Australian. Um, 
So, okay, Google, pause music. Sorry about that, you guys. I'm, I make very good use of my AI around here. But um, so I put elementary examples, but we're actually going to go out and go to HyperDocs as well, hyperdocs.co. And we're going to go to find and then samples. And these are all samples of HyperDocs for every subject. So I want you to go find something. And that, by the way, the one called Nadine uh, Gilkinson, she is an elementary kindergarten, first grade, kind of second grade teacher. So she's a really good place to go if that is your subject area. I'm going to make a Padlet and in about five to 10 minutes, I'm going to have, we're going to share out ones that we really liked and kind of talk about why we liked those. And for those of you who this is your first session, sorry, we're like at the end, but it'll still be nice to explore and see some of these like elementary here. Nadine's more, I would call that littles. And so if you click on them, you'll get that exact same document I gave you. And you can see there's a lot of people on here, more than just you guys, like 40 people are on here right now. People love them some HyperDocs. And while you do that, I'm going to make the Padlet and hopefully I can get it in edge. When you find one, when you find one that you like, you can put it on this Padlet. I placed the Padlet um, link in the chat. And I'll even put my favorite. I gotta go find it, but I, on another browser, but I'll show you mine. You've seen it if you've been in all four. And this one that I'm gonna post on there is a great one for the beginning of school. And they have beginning of school ones too. I love that. And where it says title, put your name. And I see Loretta already did that, nice work. <laughs> My computers. I'm using it too much today. It's making noises. And I 
And if I actually use the link in on the Padlet, it will, oh man, it wants, let me make it public. Sorry. But it'll show the actual HyperDoc, which is cool. So um, Loretta, like you put in the link, if you try what I'm gonna try here, and I put in and I use this little link icon, it'll show the actual HyperDoc and it looks pretty cool when we're sharing them. So you can see how mine is the actual. And you can do more than one. Okay. okay, Google, play classical for focus on Spotify. All right, here's your Spotify playlist called classical for focus. It's not my playlist. Yeah, um, Becca, I see you say I'm not seeing view pure in many of the YouTube links. I think a lot of people, and sometimes I do it, as you've seen, I forget to put them sometimes too. And that's a very, very important step. Thanks for pointing that out. Whoa. There's a back to school activity. Let's start 2019 with one word. I don't know if I'd want to do that much for back to school this year. Maybe. I don't know that all of these are actual hyperdocs. Looks like a collection of something. I'm gonna go look at the Padlet and see, oh, look. How awesome is this?
it's fun to see the ones that you guys pick. Feel free to pick more than one. Probably just a couple minutes left. Um, for second graders, yes, for the tab in Teams. Um, I'm obsessed with tabs in Teams. <laughs> I'd be, that would be like my new thing. And just to keep kids focused. Uh, classroom, Google Classroom is missing that so badly. When I first started using Teams, I was like, this is horrible. I hate this. I wanted it to be like Classroom. And then, um, uh, then I, now I am, I think Teams is so much better. Yeah, it's, most people haven't used um, one or the other because they're usually stuck into one. Um. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna come back over to the Padlet and we're gonna take our last few minutes. Um, and I want you to take a look at the Padlet as well. Some really good ones are going in there. Um, I like that Loretta, although she teaches American history, put in the ancient Greece because all she has to do here is change that to uh, the colonies instead of ancient Greece. And, um, and just go in and change that wording and then put in what she wants to for her American history unit. And that's what one thing I hope you walk away with from today is that um, these are just the beginning. You make them what they become. Um, okay, Google, stop. And uh, and like I said, I've never found one that worked perfectly for me, but I have found ones whose color scheme worked really well. One of the things that we do in HyperDocs is that we, um, we always give credit. If I were to take that Greece one and make it into American history, I would say um, this HyperDoc uh, influenced by whoever did that Greece one, but reimagined by Holly Clark. And so we always give credit and it's just a nice little nod to give as we, as we learn from each other. For those of you who are new and maybe if they're still with us, um, one of the things that I recommend and I'm gonna put it in the chat. Um, I'm gonna put, um, I want you to consider if you are a Facebook person um, going to this Facebook group. And if you just put, um, in their questions, Holly Clark sent me, you don't have to fill out anything else, they'll let you write in. Um, so I find a lot of good information in this group and every Saturday at like 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. they have um, they have a PD and they go, they find someone who's done a really good hyperdoc and they have the person come on and explain the process they went through to do that. And um, thank you so much, Becca. I, I need to give you a job. <laughs> um, 
And I really appreciate hearing how people um, have come to to their thinking around a hyperdoc. So one of them is uh, back at Teams. I'm now looking at six hyperdocs. And one of them is this one that is on Frederick Dr Douglass and his um, Fourth of July speech, which is this uh, one that if you have the slides that you could click on and go through. And I listened to Nadia, who came and uh, who, who created this. I listened to her. And I actually brought her on to a show I do with Matt Miller because it was so profound, the things she went through to create this. She got the help of Kelly Hilton, one of the Hyperdox girls, so it really helped out a bit. But all six of these, you can go click through these as well. That top one in the second kind of row, the coin combinations, you can tell that that is one that is for uh, little guys. I use the book Bento, which I don't really consider a hyperdoc, to be honest with you. I consider it kind of instructions. But um, I use that book Bento one all the time. I'm obsessed. It might be my new favorite after the manifesto, the humans of New York. I'm going to change that to humans of San Diego with some students I'm going to be working with. And, um, and so uh, these are some other examples that you can look at. You also might want to see that in our next slide, since we're not going to be together past this one for these, this eats, shoots, and leaves is a thing around commas. And the, the picture that you see here, a comma lesson, that's actually a link to a YouTube where we go in and watch someone doing this hyperdoc. Um, so this, we're going to see the teacher, how she does it on tech and off tech in this YouTube and the YouTube is like 11 minutes and it's worth a watch to see how someone kind of is doing this in practice while it's face to face and the kids are all in the classroom sitting next to each other. And we might be like, ah, um, uh, uh, um, sorry, I just looked at one of the things in the message, which I think looks really cool. I, I didn't can't see more. But anyway, so it, it shows um, it shows what it can look like in that face to face environment. And if we keep going, there's also some strategies about ways to get started. So what I'm going to ask you to do is after this, I make sure that you've signed in to that HyperDoc site. And there, they have eight free lessons, which will go back over in really short micro lessons. Everything I've taught in these lessons and probably way better than I did, to be honest with you. Um, so this is that's where you want to go next is to this whole HyperDocs um, CO. Sign in, because if you're not signed in, we were just there, but we weren't signed in. And so we didn't have access to those free courses. And there's... Um, they're also going to be having special academies inside of there for English teachers, for um, administrators. So you're so it'll be a really cool place to learn going forward. Um, and let's see what our next slide is before we part ways with each other. Um, so we did this. We did this already. We filed, made a copy of some samples. We shared them out. And now we know that we can remix and um, and. Just like I talked about, now you can go out to the academy and look at the different lessons. So it looks like this one here is lesson one, and it's explore fun hyperdocs and revise for remote learning. How cool is that? I might need to watch that one. So that is um, hyperdocs to get you started, to give you a background information on the difference between the multimedia tech set and a hyperdoc, get you in the right direction. Um, the link is to a third grade grammar lesson. And um, even if you don't teach third grade, it's really interesting to watch. Um, so hopefully you have something to get started with because this is the key to remote learning, being able to do this kind of lesson design. And don't worry if you make mistakes, kids survive. I, I survived a whole year of a teacher who was one big mistake. <laughs> so we'll all survive if, if, um, uh oh, I think I don't know what's happening right now. I hope I'm still with you guys. Um, because that thing is going. So I'm hoping I'm still with you. But now I have office hours. So if you want to come and ask some questions about HyperDocs, I'm not going to go back over them. Oh, good. Thank you. 
Um, but if you have a question or you've designed one and you want to just see what I think of it, you can come to those office hours. You have to go back out and go to the link that's in the um, at the queue site. Uh, but I'm going to stop recording this. And I really appreciate for those of you who made it through. Now, the certificate of attendance. That's good. Let me quickly. Let me just do this. And it's not going to be as quick. Okay, let me really, really quick or as quickly as I can try and find the um, thing in my drive for certificate of attendance and hopefully the form works. Give me just one second to find it. I should have looked while you guys were looking for stuff. Sorry about that. And I'm hoping it's right here. Yes. Oh, hold on. I'm close. I'm super close. So for those of you who don't want a certificate of attendance, you can go and meet me in hyper in, in office hours or start your day. And I'm getting the certificate. And it's just it's not anything official. It's just something from me. I can't promise that it will work for your district, but uh, it will attempt to give you something. So you have something. And I just have to go get the form right now. And I have that. I'm going to have the link in two seconds for you. So if you need it for like four hours, um, go fill it out a couple times for the ones that you did. Yeah. Um, I think uh, some people can do it and some people can't. So anyway, there you go. And I will see you over in, um, in the office hours. Thanks, everyone.